Hi guys, and welcome to Kaiser Vanguard for today's Kaiser Pod. Uh, as you can probably see, we've got a webcam today, so that's great. Love showing off my beautiful face to everyone. The lockdown beard. Yeah, so we're going to be trying trying something new where we're going to try and cut between us and the pages, or it might just be at the beginning if I can't be fucked with it later, we'll see. So uh, onto the onto the thing, we've got zero news first. So there has been some zero stuff today that got announced. So in Japanese, have confirmed that we're getting the Link Joker uh, sets. Well, the beginning of the Link Joker anime series arc uh, cards. So that basically just confirms break rides, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. So these are the first three that we saw. So Blaster Blade Liberator, Ethics Buster, and Dragonic Descendant pretty damn cool to be fair um i think were these all in the same set together i think they were yeah i think it was set 10 wasn't it where uh, they had I, I i started playing with the <laughs> i actually don't think ethics buster was in there well i, I know that um blast of liberator was its own trial deck and, yeah, yeah, yeah and had alfred like the original alfred liberator um i want to say it's set like nine that descendant was in set eight, no no set no set, set 10 was the introduction okay. of, of limit break wait no Descendant? No, Descendant definitely came out in the same set as Liberators, because it's an Eradicator. Yeah. Uh, they came out in set 10, along with Genesis. I'm trying to think what the other clan was. I'm pretty sure it was Spike Brothers. Uh, Did Spike Brothers get the break ride first? They got a limit break. I don't know if it was a break ride. But they got something. But like, I think by then Dragon might have come out in that set. I know Spike Brothers was in that set, but I don't know how much they got. Yeah, maybe it was... Um... I don't remember Ethics Buster being in that set though. Yeah, um, I, th I think they probably put Ethics Buster in that set and then they put in like the reverse version and then the other version. Which means Lock is probably coming to zero. Yeah, Lock will be coming soon, yeah. That's um, fun. You know, pay your pay your tax of having to play <laughs> like your three unlock grade ones in every deck. Just so you don't auto lose the chaos. Yeah. That's gonna be fun. Um, speaking about other zero stuff. Uh, fourth clan did get announced for zero, like brand new clan, which is Genesis. Um, brand new for zero. But... Yeah, it's brand new for zero. Uh, Masaki but... will be playing it again, like she did. Uh, she's going to make the clan swap. Uh, they did unveil like a bunch of cards from from the stream today for Genesis, uh, and it did a hundred percent confirm through uh, Himiko's skill that break rides are coming back, and yeah. break rides will be a mechanic that they are exploring. Um, which is cool. Uh, do, you, do you have the skills for these in, in the presentation? Okay. No. Okay, so basically, like, uh, I know that Artemis, the Grade 3 Artemis' skill is, like, uh, Limit Break, you Soul Blast 3. By the way, another quick thing, just completely tangential, you can now choose what you Soul Blast. So Pale Moon is now finally playable. Yeah, so they updated the rules on Soul Blasting so you can choose what you Soul Blast now. They also updated the rules on Perfect Guards, but I don't actually know what they changed about it because the translation was really weird. Um, they Google it said something, something about yeah, something about Critical Two, but I don't really understand it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, being able to Soul Blast whatever you want is an option you can toggle on and off. So Pale Moon is playable. This deck becomes more playable because this deck actually sometimes cares about what it Soul Blasts. Um, and I know that Artemis' skill is like Limit Break. Soul Blast 3, you draw 2, or like draw 3, and then put 1 from your hand into your soul and it gains 5k power or something. Uh, and Himiko, I think, is just the same old Limit Break skill she used to have. Uh, it's the full Artemis, like, Duke-style ride chain, and everything like that, so... I'm actually reasonably looking forward to Genesis. Genesis is one of the few clans I actually like in this game. Yeah, um, Genesis will be pretty cool. Yeah. Just more variety in general. I'd like more variety of good clans. Rather than it just being, you know, these are the ones that were good in the show. Yeah. Please, please play Narukami, Gold Paladin, Aqua yeah. Force. It's more for them not to release a set with clans in it, and then that clan to just, like, to, to have, like, for instance, in English, we've just got um, Gold Paladin, Narukami, Angel Feather, and Great Nature. 
because Gold Paladin and Narakami are good in the series, they're good in the game right now. Angel Feather and Great Nature are just trash. They could just release cards to just make them on par play-wise to the other clans. It's not that hard to do. I know that Great Nature does get a big boost next set, but at the same time that's when Christopher Robin or whatever he's called, Christopher Lowe, he, uh, he gets really good in the anime. Well, he... Because they just psych Wally him out of nowhere. Yeah, basically. Just tap it as a massive troll. Yeah. Uh, so we also got this today, which is... Um, so in English, we've only just gotten the... Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Some, some coin cam campaign, where for every 50 packs you get, you get a triple rare of your choice. So it looks like they are doing another campaign in Japanese for these two sets specifically. So if you buy 50 packs from Team Q4 set, you'll get 50 of these medals and you can exchange them for a triple rare. Or you can exchange 15 of them for a double rare of your choice. Out of, I think it's, it'll just be out of the Team Q4 stuff, so out of Royal Kagero, uh, Nova Grappler and Oracle. Um, I'd assume that later on they'll add Genesis into that and Narakami into that. Since, and Gold I guess, because they are all Q4 clans. But Definitely. at the same time, I don't know if they'll class those as Q4 clans. I mean, if, if they do that, then it wouldn't be that much of a stretch of logic to say that they might include, like, Link Joker in that, because two members of Q4 do end up playing that clan. Yeah, I think technically when like, Kai plays it, I'm pretty sure he's not a member of Q4 at that time. He's not a member of Q4 when he plays Narukami. He's not, you're right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> And at that point, Q4 is not a thing, it's just the card fight club. But yeah, yeah, that's a good point, yeah. And then no, I think I, I think this rival I think this rival set is just supposed to be AL4, because it's uh, it's showing Shadow Paladin, it's showing Pale Moon, so it's probably just the AL4 clans. Yeah, most likely. Which is Spike Brothers in this, for some reason. Yeah, I mean Kyo plays Spike Brothers. I, th I think Kyo plays everything. Like, uh, he plays he does, Mega Paladin he's, for he's, an episode. He's known for playing Spike Brothers in Zero okay. at the moment. Like, there's a Kyo event going on. Which is Spike Brothers, it's Dudley Emperor. Oh, okay. It's just a repeat um, of a previous event, right? Yeah, but you've got a new uh, gacha draw with Dudley Emperor and Jelly Beans in it. Okay, so the good cards. Basically, yeah. yeah. But the, the deck is actually good now, it's like a tier 1.5 or tier 2 deck. Um, I don't know if this, they're going to do the same with this as they have done in, um, in English. So at the moment, we're getting these Aichi medals, I think they're called. Um, but after. Tomorrow, I think it is after the twenty second of July. They just, if you haven't spent the medals, they just revert into normal V medals. Okay. So these might also only be for a limited amount of time. I'm not sure on that. Please buy packs. It'd be a shame if it is for a limited amount of time. It'd be good to just keep something like this. Like you can get these medals for specific things if you want to pull on them, or if you want normal V medals for the other stuff, you just pull on the everything packs. Yeah. I mean, it just, it just gives more choice. Giving, for yeah, giving more options to consumers is never a bad thing. No. Like, I think, if anything, giving more options to consumers encourages them to buy more of a specific thing they want. So, yeah. if Bushy keeps this around, this is probably good for the overall health of the game. Oh, yeah. And, like, uh, I, I saw a thing, like, just from something that wasn't Vanguard related, that Zero is, like, in the top five mobile games in Japan or something like that. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, like, ev even people who don't play who haven't transitioned from the physical card game to playing it on their phones. Like, it's got a, a lot of fresh blood into Vanguard itself just as a mobile gacha game, which yeah. is kind of interesting. Um, I didn't expect it to take off as much as it has, but it has absolutely come up a storm. It's mm. really, it's doing So it's a player with, like, with Doken Battle and stuff. I assume the Doken Battle is still playing top five. Yeah, I think it's like Doken Battle, one of the Sword Art ones, Grand Blue Fantasy, and then like, the one where they're all boat girls, I think that's number one. Oh, um, can call. Yeah, I think it's. I think that one's number one. Yeah, very, very, very Japanese games. Uh, so onto the other stuff that was released in. Is it was it an earlier stream, like a product stream or something? Yeah. Did today. It was a product stream at nine a.m. and I set my alarm for half ten, which was just when it finished. Oh. <laughs> so I woke up and I'm like, okay, let's watch the stream. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's their 10th anniversary this year, because, yeah. came, because Vanguard came out in 2011. God. Um, yeah, so it's been a long time. there's going to be a 10th anniversary celebration, which is, I think it's probably just going to be a stream and a few other things. Fun, funny, uh, funny thing I noticed, um, the 10th anniversary of Vanguard is also the 20th anniversary of Jam Project, 
So we might see them redo the original opening. It's like an anniversary. Oh, thing. okay. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. I, w I would not mind that. But yeah, we've got a nice piece of a uh, watercolor art from the three protagonists from the three different seasons. Four protagonists from four different seasons. There are. Em Emmy's not a protagonist. Em Emmy, she is. She's the protagonist in F. Well, she's not even the protagonist, really. Uh, Ibuki is the protagonist in the F. Moment, but... I will accept her as the protagonist the moment she plays a game of Vanguard. In F. Yeah. She has played games of Vanguard before, but she hasn't but she, played a game of Vanguard. But she's not been the main character then. Yeah. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Uh, they also announced a new manga, which is... The artwork looks kind of horrifying, but it's... Um, Akira Ito and some other guy who are working together to do the artwork for it. Um, Which explains why it's, everybody has the same face. Yeah, it's all about a 20-year-old Kai going around Europe. Yeah, so this is supposed to be set like just after Legion Mate and before G, when Kai is going around the EuroLeague. Um, absolutely crushing everyone because he did that, apparently. Um, <laughs> so it's going to end up being like, uh, like, from what I remember from the end of G, or like during G, was that the Euro League is apparently? I think it's either a a trios tournament or it's just a tournament that has a first, second, and third. And Kai does end up winning it, and I think Gaillard is second, and then Nave, the guy who plays Metalborg, is third. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is probably going to be impossible to find online. If this gets an English translation, we will probably be reading it and reviewing it. It's um, yeah. It's, it's Kai related memorabilia, so I will have to pick it up. It's either unlikely it'll get an English release for the manga because the last manga didn't sell very good in English, as far as I'm aware. Um, or if it does get an English release, it'll probably be a long time after it's finished again, like it was in English. I think. I know that the first chapter came out way after it came out in Japan, but yeah. Yeah. The only thing that I kind of want them to explain, because we don't have anything that really covers the time gap between the end of the original series and the start of G, is when does Stride come in? Like, <laughs> do they do they just have Strides? Like, I, I know there's the whole Planet Cray Gear Chronicle thing that invents the mechanic, but like, do they just turn up in people's decks? Because well, it they, happened in, uh, I think it didn't. It they, happened they, in the movie where they beat um, Ibuki, and then all of a sudden, Aichi had the Stride Neon Messiah in his deck. That doesn't even have the stride board. It wasn't a stride. It was just a grade four. But then when they brought it on the real game, they just said basically it's stride rules. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I just want to know if like that would would that then put strides in booster packs or like I, I I just want to see where Kai like starts ass pulling like this is probably a fantastic way to retrain the ace as well into like the main game because yeah, yeah. the ace was the first uh, I think it was the first Kagura stride in a fighter's collection which was based on legacy support um, or it's a way to introduce um, legion into V I would not mind that we, we do have pseudo legions yeah but not properly wait what we have pseudo legions you mean about the metalborg things like the metalborg things we have the grey they're um, not legion legions that, that's not two cards on your vanguard circle which is what it should be yeah. Everyone wants to have that awkward vanguard attack where they've got to attack and twist the hand, both their hands forward. The moment the moment they announce Legion coming back for V, I'm just gonna like tape two top loaders together and cut out the middle and just have that as my vanguard circle. You just slide them in and then makes it easier to turn it. Also makes it easier to damage your cards every game as well. No, oh, I mean obviously. Uh, so obviously we're gonna see bluish flames with this manga as well. Which yeah. is pretty cool. I'd love to see bluish flames back in uh, V as well. One day. Uh, we did get a lot of other confirmed releases for V today, but we are going into them later apparently because I've put yeah. these other cards in first. <laughs> so uh, we've got the cards that were revealed this week uh, throughout the week first, and then we'll have the new cards that were revealed in the stream after, yeah. and then we've got the brand new releases. It's a there. lot of Grand Blue this week. It is. It's also, we've got all three of the Critical Triggers for our music clan now, which is good. Uh, so we got Cyril the Ghosty. Uh, bank, uh, rear guard and guardian circle. If there are 15 or more cards in your drop zone, he gains 10k power and 10k shield. This is very okay for a common. Uh, I don't think that this it's, is going to see a super amount of play. Um, it's, it's poo. I yeah, think. it's it. It's a common that says this is how ground blue is played. Yeah, I mean it's not awful for like to go on rear guard. An 18k booster is pretty good, but yeah, I think like, it's if you probably one of the biggest ones that they have. I mean, you can if they had a way to like. Does Grand Blue have a way to like intercept from the back row? Not does, does that I seven, know of. I know, seven, seven, I know the Seven Seas can intercept from the back row, but they don't give other cards intercept, they just give themselves intercept. If, if they did do that, this card becomes 
way better in that deck. Yeah. Um, if, if this card somehow gained Intercept, like if they just added this card has Intercept when it's in the back row, it'd make it a pretty damn good card. And probably and a foil. would also, yeah, bro, it, I mean, it'd probably be a red or something. Yeah. Also, it'd make it so you've got a choice to play Protect 2 mm -hmm. in Grand Blue as well. Obviously, if it's Intercept from the back row, again, think of uh, We've got Rampage Shade. Their crit. This is some really nice artwork. It's very confusing artwork. There's a lot going on in this picture. Yeah, because like the original arts for these crits was obviously these are critical triggers. They're doing damage, and now they're these are critical triggers. They're defending. Yeah. Which is kind of weird. Um, one thing I will note: Grand Blue will probably end up playing this because I don't think Grand Blue wants to play draw triggers. So they'll yeah. probably end up playing this because they'll naturally have perfect guards from yeah, that's the same with, clan. Same with Dark Regulars as well, isn't it? Yeah, Dark Regulars. And I know that Susano is playing Sentinel Grits. So it might just be a more protect oriented thing. Although in Vision this weekend, a 16 crit Kagero deck playing these, one standard, 16 crit the cross. Why am I not surprised? Turn Go guard sideways. Yeah, Dra Barber. Dragonic Overlord has always been one of those clans that's just. Sorry, Kagura has been always been one of those clans where you just you crit your opponent to death. You're always playing at least eight crits in your deck usually. Yeah. Uh, we got Masunari. This guy is Vanguard Rearguard Circle. At the end of the battle that your Vanguard attacks, you can pay three Town Blasts and three Soul Blasts of Grade Threes. Uh, choose one of your Rearguards and send all of your Rearguards with the same card name as that unit. Trash! Next slide. Um, yeah, this thing is not very playable. This is Jirakuma. Yeah. Uh, this well, this it could go in the shit version of the deck. The double rare, what is he called? Magatsu Gale, no, not Magatsu. Uh, Mandala Lord. Yeah, Mandala Lord. It plug. could go. It could go in that deck, I suppose, if you wanted to lose games. Yeah, this doesn't even have a gift. Yeah, I mean, um, usually giftless grade threes are actually pretty strong. But sometimes this one is one of the more yeah. disappointing um, ones. I think. Um, do you know what you could do for soul blasting three grade threes? You could Huga your opponent's entire board three times. Yeah. Just leave it there. Yeah. Uh, uh, we got Masamura, the Murakuma crit. This artwork is nice. Yeah, I really dig like the petals on the shield and like sort of like the shield barrier. It looks yeah. really nice. They have, yeah, like you said, they've they've made it so all the cards didn't have shielding stuff. Even though when they first came out, they were more attacking because they were crit triggers. Yeah. They were never shield. They never looked like like this. Obviously, looks like a perfect guard. As it should, but yeah, they, they shouldn't. Uh, they didn't have that in the good old G days. Uh, his artwork's pretty cool. I like his old artwork too. We've got Demonted Executioner. This card is so good. This guy looks really cool. Yeah. So he's a grade two. He's Vanguard Circle only. When it attacks a grade two or greater, this unit gets plus 5k. And Vanguard and Rearguard Circle, when it's placed, can't boss one, Soul Charge three. And if you soul charge one or more triggers, draw a card. Why is this a double? This thing is insane. This is really good, yeah. This yeah. is a good ride target as well. It's a good ride target. It finally gives DI raw soul charge that can plus. Mm. Uh, it's good soul charging on grade 2 that doesn't require you to either ride an otherwise vanilla, like Where Tiger Jaeger, or whatever the... Yeah, that's the grade 2 one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it gives you actual draw power in DI. You and, and the main thing is, like, you ride this, and it means that you don't have to rely on, oh, I ride Yellow Bolt, and then I have to ride on top of Yellow Bolt for the Soul Charge, or for any of the uh, associated skills. This card is just good. This I card feel like it really doesn't good. need that Vanguard only skill. The one it attacks a grade to a greater, it gets plus 5k. Like that's pretty. It could it could have that as Vanguard and Rearguard, and it still wouldn't be. Yeah. It still wouldn't make it that much better. I think it's designed so that you can just solo hit force going second. I think yeah. that's why. Um, yeah, I suppose it means you don't have a, you don't need a booster. Yeah. Yeah. So solo hit force would be. Oh, apparently you can scroll to go to the next slide. I didn't know that. Uh, so, <laughs> the next crit is Dark Regulars. This artwork is amazing. This is beautiful. This is one eye succubus. She's a real pretty one. Yeah, very playable. Again, all of these uh, original stride crits or grade three crits are going to be retrained as these sentinel crits. I am really looking forward to the Genesis one when we eventually get it, and not the Angel Feather one because it's going to be stupid expensive because it's a waifu. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. 
Uh, we got Negra Bound. Uh, so we haven't got Negra Maul yet, as far as I'm aware. Uh, I don't know if Negra Maul is going to make it as like part visible. I think a lot of this is the original stuff that was in the original Night Rose Trial deck. Negra Maul was. I don't was think he not so. the great. Oh, no, because no, the main grade two was a uh, card we'll talk about later. Um, yeah, yeah, he's got Negra Bound. He's a uh, drop zone skill. So if you use a discard a card from your hand and put this card on the bottom of your deck to call a grade one from your drop zone's graveyard circle. And then if your drop zone's got ten or more cards, you may call regardless of the grave. We finally have a card that goes back to the deck. Yeah, and, yeah. And Grand Blue is one of those clans that doesn't actually mind discarding because you have a lot of dead pieces in your hand you want in the drop zone, like Skull Dragon. Um, you have all the, the ghost ship that you can't call from your hand. Um, being able to put cards back in your deck is like so good just yeah. so you don't deck um, also there are infinite loops with this thing in premium really? yeah I mean I'm not surprised but yeah. yeah this thing probably should have had a hard once per turn on it but then we're getting to Yu-Gi-Oh territory this is good You, I think you want to play three or four copies of this in Grand Blue oh yeah definitely Yeah, because even if this just said discard a card call a card from drop zone you then have an on play skill you put a free E card back in your deck it's it's a plus one for free I mean any any drop zone skills in general are like yeah they're almost guaranteed plays in Grand Blue really at this point and uh yeah the, the other thing is Greed Shade can get everything back from your drop zone so it literally does not matter what you put in there yep uh, we got Awazu uh so this is Murakumo Rhaegar Circle only went to play search your deck for one card put it into your drop zone shuffle your deck and this unit gets that unit's card name until end of turn this is really good is it? So it seems good for because I know Yasuo needs a card in drop zone, but Yasuo also does put the card in drop zone as well. The main thing that I think you want to do with this in standard is you want to mill your one copy of Shiryuki, so then this gets Shiryuki's name, right. and then you can use Rainy Madam and Jakotsku Girl to then try and get the the one out of your drop zone. Okay. Um, but yeah, this also just can set up other stuff. You can put things in your drop zone. You can just use this to inherit, to mill a thing, inherit its name, and then clone it, and then clone the thing that you milled, so you can do a bunch of really fun plays with, um, uh, what's it called, D -d 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 Mandal Lord again. Um, yeah, you can, uh, I think you can, I think there's one Murakumo skill that cares about being in the drop zone, you can like bounce a copy of itself to call it from drop zone or something, so that thing for it yeah yeah um for the clone deck this is playable but i don't again i don't think this is super crazy this is probably good in premium as well like i think this is really good with new adio because it just gives you a free name and you can mill hugo get hugo back win the game yeah yeah this is really good actually yeah yeah and it's costless yeah that's one of the main things we don't have very many costless skills nowadays do we? yeah we do seem to be getting more and more as the game goes on like recently at least yeah. Uh, this guy, when placed from hand, return your soul to your deck, shuffle your deck, and then for each card returned, a soul charge one. So if you've got a really bad soul, you can just mulligan your soul with this card. If this was a DI card, it would be absolutely busted. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> I'll call my four Doreen the Thrusters, then call this guy. How uh, big How big okay. do you want your Doreens to be? Uh, about 140k each? Yeah. Uh, this, I mean, it's not the worst card I've seen, but also part of Pale Moon at the moment is putting specific cards into your soul anyway. You don't want to take those specific cards out to put random ones in. Yeah, I'd like to guard with all of my Magia dolls and then put my Magia dolls back in my deck and then get like a bunch of triggers. Or I, I want to put my Silver Thorns back in my deck just so my opponent has a chance. Yeah, definitely. Also, he's a grade 3. Why did he, he does not need to be a grade 3. I mean, the, the thing is... This card oh, still wouldn't be played if it was a grade 1 or 2. If... if you might have an argument for playing this if it was when played, not from hand. Yeah. But yeah. You need to be on grade three, so that means you probably need to be on, you know, part of your good game plan before you resolve this guy. Even if they gave Pale Moon a card that's like Doreen the Thruster, like, but it gains slightly less, this card still won't be played. Unless they give it literally Doreen the Thruster, where it gains 5k for every card, then yeah, maybe this card will be played. That was 8k. Yeah. They could, get, they could make a 1k during the thruster, but you gain 5k for every card to Soul Judge, and this card is never good. But, at the same time, right now, not as good. Yeah. Pretty disappointing. 
Uh, we got the heel trigger for Hellman. This was the one from Green, the early trial, trial deck, right? Yeah. 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 A little bit the, disappointed you can't get this in foil because it's really pretty. Yeah, the lion looks very strange. It looks like it's kind of got a human's face. I think it's the eyes. Oh god, it does. Kind of creepy. Oh. But other than the lion, the rest of it looks cool. The monkey looks pretty sweet. The weird pigeon that's dribbling some fish I think it's looks pretty sweet. Uh, same thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't have to play the weird goblin anymore. That's a plus. Yeah, true, yeah. No, it wasn't. It was um, masked something or other. Yeah, it was, I think it was a weird looking. Goblin, I don't think it just looked goblin. It looked awful. It might have been, I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, we got this guy, I think we got this guy, like, yes, it Sans Undertale. Yeah, he looks very <laughs> Undertale, doesn't it? It's, it's the eyes, isn't it? The uh, dark outside of the blue inside. Oh, God. It's a skeleton, skeleton pirate skipper. He is Vanguard only. Uh, once per turn, count last one, put two cards from the top of your deck into your drop zone, call up to one card from your drop zone's rearguard circle, and that unit and this unit get plus 10k. Um, I know I talk about limited fight a lot, but this is probably really good there because they don't have generic revival effects on grade three. Um, other than that, if this was Vanguard or Rearguard Circle, it'd probably be way more playable. But as it stands, uh, a certain card that got revealed today is way better than this. Um, yeah, he's yeah, you don't. For for kids who can't afford like VRs, this is probably good. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with a lesser powered effect like this at rare which is fine yeah uh, we got Parliament Shade weird name but okay uh, when it Vanguard only another grade 3 without a gift that's great uh, when it attacks can't last sorry so last 3 grade 3's again because I see him, that's a, another thing uh, retire all of your opponent's rear guards if your drop zone has 15 or more cards call 5 cards from your drop zone to rear guard circle and all of your units get plus 10k this is a really good kill card, actually. <laughs> the retire all of your opponent's rear guard thing is something we don't see very often in like standard, at least. I think only Blademaster does that for the moment. Yeah, I know that Hugo spins the entire board, and yeah, um, yeah. Uh, if I think by the time you have three grade threes in your soul, because I don't think uh, Grand Blue Soul Charge is that much. You the game is probably over anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, you could always play one tech of this. I imagine a lot of people would do that. You know, it's, it's the same with Nubatama with that bird that they have, because that's like soul by two or three grade threes. Uh, and yeah. they discard like three murder guards. Uh, and people play but that works two, over, yeah. like one or two of those, but that does work over here. You're right. Um, yeah. Uh, Although at least it's when it attacks, that's not awful. I mean, like, you could play this in Grand Blue. I mean, their last Grade 3 without a gift got banned in Standard. True. After my boy flying it. Yeah. Sure. Next card kind of shows why. It looks like a Grade 2. That's my only doubt. My it really does. Problem. It just looks like Rune Jet, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we got their Heal Trigger. This is really cute. It is so adorable. I don't even care about the girl. I just like the ghost. The ghost looks really cool. Adorable. I, I love when they make cute triggers. Like I, I hate waifu cards, but like stuff like this, yeah. I jive with. Yeah. I'm cool with this. I will accept it. Uh, so this is this got revealed today. This is Thin Miss Banshee. Uh, she's a grade two with rear guard only skills. So when placed by your card's ability, this unit gets plus ten k. Already pretty good. Uh, and when it's retired from the rear guard circle by your card's ability. Draw a card and this ability can only be used once. Like, it's a hard one to put down, basically. So, if you retire this for your Fat Blessed Dragon, you get to draw a card. That's what, that's what I'm doing. Or when you that use time. that Grade 3 without a gift and retire your entire board. Why would you play Grand Blue cards with this card? You just play, play your Shadow Bone. Don't no, tell it's you, not 5k. You don't. I mean, true. You no, you, you can get this with Dark Metal Dragon. Dragon. You can get this with Extreme Dark Metal Dragon. Extreme fight. Um. <laughs> Just when you call this with an ability, it's a 19k attacker by itself. This is pretty good. Um, yeah. Its second effect is more relevant for the next card, I believe it is. But yeah, yeah this is actually pretty pretty good. So we finally got her. We got Night Rose. The last VR. Vampire Princess of Night from Night Rose. So this that is, is the, the Night Rose that doesn't. Yeah, this isn't the Night Rose with big titties from the uh, the Rummy Booster. 
Yeah. Fortunately. Uh, so she she has no Rhaegar skill. So that's pretty standard for a VR nowadays. Uh, when your Rhaegar attacks or boosts, that unit gets plus 5k until end of battle, and then retire it at the end of that battle. So she makes everything hollow that attacks? Yeah, so that last card we saw, you attack with it, it's a 24k column if it got called by an effect, and it'll die and you get to draw a card. Pretty damn good. Uh, and then when Night Rose attacks, you can count last one, choose one of your columns, call up to two cards from your drop zone to the column, and if your opponent's Vanguard is greater three or greater, this unit gets plus 10k. So, when we first read this, we read it as those units gained plus 10k, uh, which would have been amazing. Uh, she's not as good because she herself gains 10k. I mean, it makes her bigger, otherwise she'd just yeah. be a 12k that does nothing. True. I mean, it'll make her probably like a 30k attack every turn, depending on what boost you've got. Uh, you can call the girl on the last one. Uh, no, there you go, ignore that. Uh, we can call her, and we can call that grade one card, wherever that went. Was it Magma? That thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you can call those two, and then they they do gain the plus ten k on both of them. I don't think that's time. what you'd want to do. I think you'd want to go swing with the girl, retire her draw card, swing with uh, Night Rose, choose that empty column, or like uh, swing with your other column first, retire those, swing with Night Rose. Call Columbard and something else. Columbard then calls something else like a Skull Dragon or the Ghost Boat. And then you've drawn like two cards off this, gotten five attacks for two counter blasts. I don't know, seems pretty good to me, Chief. Yeah, she's definitely got a lot of potential. Yeah, uh, she can definitely do a lot. She doesn't care about having a ridiculous number of things in the drop zone and giving herself like power for no reason and crits for no reason. Mm -hmm. So that's a welcome change of design because. You like, you, you take the design for Baskirk, you like rearrange a few words. That's how you got Kakaitis. And then we finally got something original. It only took three years, but Night Rose is pretty damn good. I am actually looking forward to playing uh, this kind of deck, uh, at, at like a more tempo focused brown blue deck rather than, I'm going to mill myself. Can you guard this? Yes, no. And then I die from deck out. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can even like set up your boards more with the new with the new grade one that we talked about earlier. Um, I think they have a selective miller as well in standard, like one that lets you just look through your deck for a card. Yeah, 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 pretty sure. That is. So you can put your combo pieces in there. Uh, also in premium, this is probably good because you didn't actually care about what your grade three vanguards did in grand blue, but this has the night rose name. Yeah. yeah, so that makes. Also, this is probably better on grade three. Because it, it gives you five multis and a protect marker. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, um, and then you can even then you get your counterblasts back with um, with the start of the ball. Yeah. So these are the only two cards we actually got today. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the stream, anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we didn't get any other skills or anything. Did we? we just got confirmed more cards. So we got this beauty. We got. Uh, so I think so. Me and Max called this out last week. That we were going to get a Daigo special set or something soon, like a Di whether it was going to be a Daigo deck or what, because we noticed that something said Daigo on the stream last time. I think it said that Daigo is going to be in the next stream or something along that. Daigo wasn't in the stream, so it said something about Daigo. Uh, but yeah, we got this. Uh, it's confirmed that that card is Sanctuary Guard Dragon. It does look like it, but a little bit slimmer to me. Maybe it's just the angle. Maybe it's just had a really good lockdown workout method. Oh, I'm not dude, sure. Not me. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm very excited for this. I absolutely hated Sanctuary Guard back in the day, but I'm excited for this just because I like Daigo. And if, if they make it, they could do a lot with this card. I don't know what they could do exactly. But call four well. grade ones, Luard would like to know your location. Yeah. Um, I think one of the one thing that they're just doing at this point with Royal Paladin is they're going, okay, Aichi's not the main character, so we'll just kind of contain Royal Paladin stuff to itself. Mm. Like, the MLB set, this... Like, this is a set. This isn't, like, a pre-done legend deck. This is just Royal Paladin stuff, I think. Have they said that it's a set? Yeah, it's a set. It literally I mean, yeah, I know it says set there, but I know what they're like. It's a special expansion set V, which means it could be just a legend deck. Like, God, I, I have it deck. probably says it there in Japanese, but obviously we, my, my, my Japanese is a bit off, considering I don't know what any of that says. I think 
It says mango. I just put the one. No idea. If it says mango anywhere on there, I'll be genuinely Uh, we, we got a set 12 confirmed. Yeah, this is divine. I think it's like divine thunderstorm. It's got thunder all in the name somewhere. Yeah, that's the last character. Yeah, it's quite. Gabriel is so beautiful. Like, goddamn. Simp. Clearly. I don't remember my old Gabriel cards looking like this. But this artwork is insane. This is really, really nice. Yeah, so they they re overall revealed the product schedule for like the next few months from Japan. And it's just going to be all main Gusta sets and then the Royal Paladin set. Yeah. Uh, so this set is more or less just finishing up year three of support. It has four clans in it, which is Angel Feather, Narukami, Gold Paladin, and Genesis. Mm -hmm. So uh, you should have them on the next slide. I do. Yeah, so... Uh, so it's another clan, it's another set that has 41 SPs as well, which means obviously each clan's going to get an SP pack, I plus think... the other cards that are SP. Uh, and it's got two ASRs as well, like the set before and the set before that. And maybe the set before that? No, there weren't ASRs. No, ASRs are from the Shadow Paladin set. Yes. So it's Shadow Paladin, and then it's the... Oh, no, there are ASRs from. in the Nitro set as well. Yeah, they're the Labyrinth Bears. Or are they called they're, ASRs? They're called ASRs, but they're the Labyrinth Bears. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, we got the official artworks for Gurgwit and Gabriel. Gurgwit with a horse. Gurgwit also looks very slim there. Yeah, I don't really know what they're going for with, like, the Bashonen crowd, but uh, Gurgwit... Does not look as thick as he is, but he's not any he of stride looks, forms. He looks extra ginger. Yeah, it, like it, it, so his face is kind of weird. What? <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think it's just the angle that his face is at because he's normally been facing the camera and now he's like. Legit though, if they make his skill like Soul Blast 5, that would be hilarious. I don't, I don't think Gurgit has ever cared about Soul Blast <laughs> I just want Gurgit to be able to intercept from the back row. He's probably going to have a pseudo Unite skill. I'm all for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. They also confirmed some other VRs. So, so this is. Fenrir is the only one that we actually properly recognize there. Uh, that is the Grey 3 Fenrir, right? The, old, the original Fenrir. Yeah, Grey it's, Fenrir. it's not Mythical Hell Sky Beast because uh, he only had one eye. In that yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we got a new Astral Poet uh, Genesis card. I don't. I'm not 100% sure that it's been confirmed as Astral Poet, but everyone on the Facebook group seems to say that it's an Astral Poet, but I can't. Yeah, I went on the wiki earlier, and it doesn't say Astral Poet anywhere on it. I, th I think this is just, it's it's support for the Shinemon deck, yeah, rather than, you know, being generic Genesis support. And then Dragonic Vanquisher, full Bronto. Yeah, so they brought out a new Dragonic Vanquisher rather than reusing one of the other 5 million types of Dragonic Vanquisher they were. It was only four. I thought about what it So there was VMAX. V Buster, I don't Voltage, and Sparking. I don't remember VMAX. Yeah. yeah, so they gave us a new Vanquisher rather than giving us one, a redo of the old ones. Uh, it's cool to see that they are still supporting the Astro Poet stuff, the Uranus stuff, because I, I thought after the series ended they just leave it at that. It was just a deck that should be fairly solid, but not amazing for a while. But if they're giving it more support, then it'll keep going. Because he's got the little Susano things around his neck. Yeah, the Magatamas. Yeah. That's pretty cool. But yeah, it, I think it might be a new version of Astraeus Dragon, but I don't know. I don't... Uh, no, it's not gold. It's not gold. Astraeus Dragon. It's name right okay. I, I did read his name earlier, but it, it's, it's like a weird name. It's, it doesn't have Genesis. It has... Enesis in its name or something like that. But it doesn't have Genesis. Something like that. <laughs> but yeah, this is just rounding up year three support. And they've also confirmed we aren't sure if this is the grade two or the grade three Nocio. It's probably not the grade one, because the grade one got to uh, yeah, I think a it's, perfect guard. Yeah, I think it's the grade two because the grade three The Grade is, Three is Love Sniper, right? It's Love Sniper and it has a bow and arrow. This one yeah. doesn't have a button arrow. It could still be a sniper because they could very easily be arrows that, is, that are floating around it. Yeah. I'm not sure. Then, uh, oh, I mean, my boy. Obviously, if we could see the name of it, then. Yeah. No. <laughs> and then, oh, my boy. My boy has returned. Yeah, so we're getting Dragonic Descendant for standard. So oh. that's two Descendant reveals today. Uh, there'll be a third on the next slide, so yeah. Oh, no, sorry. 
So, yeah, we're going to send him. Just send this also again in the ASL. We'll see about how we play. Uh, so, they confirmed that Mighty Bolt Dragoon is getting a reprint. Which so is good. All of the Grade 3 supports will be getting printings in Year 3. Just because Dragon's Vanity doesn't count as a Year 3 product. It counts as a Year 2 product for some reason. Like, just at the very tail end of Year 2. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So, this one will get a reprint of the set. The Did we get a confirm, confirmation that the last one's getting a reprint in... Yeah, we the got Aquafall set. Yeah, we got a confirmation that Baragios is in that set, and a is confirmation Bra is Baragios the grade one. Yeah, three subjects. And uh, Branwen is in the Shadow Paladin. Yeah, so. I knew Branwen was. Yeah, that all makes sense then. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So yeah, we are getting an ASR Dragonic Overlord original artwork. It's not an Overlord; it's a uh, Descendant. But oh my god, it looks so Overlord. good. You said Dragonic Overlord, and I, I got a bit of chill. all big red dragons are the same. And. And then Uranus number f sorry no Valkyrian number five, so uh, yeah this will be the fifth different printing of Valkyrian. It's the worst card they could have chosen as an ASR in my opinion. I, I would have rather had, rather had like an ASR fucking Mighty Bolt Dragoon than this. I feel like they probably could have just made an ASR Gabriel and made tons of money. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, ASR Gabriel, every, even even Gogwit would have made them quite a lot of money. I mean, Descendant kind of makes sense, because... Oh, uh, Descendant could make complete sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I I bet their excuse for this is, oh, if you buy enough of this product, you can just play this deck out of the box, and yeah. they needed a, a reason to reprint Valkyrian, so you could actually play Valkyrian in this set. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess, just, I guess that makes sense. They could have just reprinted him as a common, though. He's already been printed as a common anyway. Yeah, he's in a trial deck. They could have printed maybe even Uranus. As this, like you know, the VR Uranus that came out a while ago. I mean, he, he did have like an, uh, a secret rare print as well. Yeah, but also the these two ASRs, well, Dragonic Dragonic Descendant is a triple rare anyway, isn't it? It's not a VR. So having that be the ASR is a bit strange, considering the ASRs and the other ones were all VRs as far as I'm aware. Morfessa. Is Morfessa? She's an ASR because she had the double up art with Blue Eye, but she's not a VR. Uh, what is what's Phantom Buster Overlord? Uh, he is an ASR as well, but it's uh, more that they've had ASRs that aren't VRs. That's the point wait, I'm what? making. I'm very confused. So I thought the point you were making was that they haven't yeah, had yeah, ASRs yeah, yeah. that were yeah. I didn't ASRs have only been VRs. But in, which is in not the true. in the Shadow Paladin set, the ASRs are Phantom Buster Overlord, Morfessa, and Blue Eye. Yeah. So we've got three ASRs. Oh, okay, I, I genuinely didn't know that. I thought it was just. I completely yeah. didn't realize that all three of those were in there. Ignore me. Yeah, I, I forgot about Morpheus, to be honest. I knew Lord and Fine Buster of Lord. I don't know how I forgot about How can you, of all people, forget about Morpheus? It's the best stride in your deck. That's a good point. That's another one of those. Uh, yeah, so that is that for the releases for this week. Um, so, this is usually the part where we talk about what we've got coming up on the channel and such. Uh, we're going to go with a resounding, we have no idea. Yeah, we're, we're just waiting for restrictions and stuff like that um, to yeah. lift even further. So we're, we're going to keep on doing the podcast every week at least. Yeah. Um, at, at the moment, we've been struggling to do content because we're still struggling to get people together. Uh, whenever we sort out a day where we can get people together, one person ends up saying that they can't do something. It was Max today, to be fair. Last yeah. two times it was you. It was. <laughs> I'm the only person who's done in, like, me and you are the only people who've done in-person content for the channel so far. That is fair. I, I did see Max uh, Sunday, in fairness, but we didn't record any games or anything because the only deck he has is Royal Paladin, and the only deck I had with me at the time was Nubatama, and we've already got that game on the channel anyway. Yeah. Uh, we were just playing Weishwartz on Sunday. Oh, God. Right. Stop. This is not the Weishwartz podcast. I know. I If this video a gets 100,000 likes, this will become the Weishwartz podcast. I have a lot of problems with Weishwartz, but yeah. We're not going to talk about it on the Vanguard podcast. Um, so, channel-wise, I still have my Angel Feather deck profiles to do, which I am constantly putting off, and honestly, you'll be lucky if they're uploaded this week. Uh... The next podcast will obviously be up next Tuesday, assuming some of us are free. I should be free. I should be free. Um, anime episodes-wise, we haven't done the last two, because Max was hanging out with his friend on Saturday, 
uh, and I... What was I doing today? I'm sure I had some sort of excuse lined up, but I found what it was. Uh, mainly, I just didn't want to do it. Yeah. Um, I'm actually... I haven't even watched the latest two episodes of the anime. I haven't watched any. Yeah, the if anime is... It's a comedy anime. If it was serious and, like, really good stuff happened every week, there was, like, maybe even new announced, like new releases in the anime, like they used to be in the good old days, uh, then I might watch it, uh, like, religiously, but at the moment the anime's not that good. Uh, they're the, they're, that and the podcast were the only things that we were doing religiously on the channel anyway. Yeah. Uh, the podcast is going to stay for now. Um, I mean, I have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, I, I do as well. Uh, it's is there anything f- that you want to see us do? Uh, we, we are still constantly making those tier videos, the top 10 videos. It's just, again, getting people together to do them, finding days where we're not all busy. Uh, I start work again on the 1st because Casino is going to reopen, so that's fun. Yeah, I am no, still doing nothing until September, and then I'm going to be back in full-time education. Um, Lucky boy. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's student loans are just free money from the government <laughs> with extra steps. Yeah. Um, I should be doing a deck profile this week because I have premium Tachikaze. Oh. That's, yeah. a, that's a choice. Big dinosaurs turn them sideways, nom nom. Yeah, so if you want to see that. Uh, the only tra- reason I'm doing it is so that I, I, I can play four Anger Blader in the format. It's the only reason I want to Oh, is it an element one standard? Yeah. Uh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> so when your opponent tries to grade two game you, you just go, haha, Anger Blader go burr. That's fair. Uh, I don't think we've got anything else planned upcoming on the channel at the moment. Uh, like I said, if there's anything you want to see us do, any deck profiles you want to do, wants to do specifically, we might not be able to get the physical cards for them because we're all poor. Uh, but we can always do like online deck profiles. I did. I, someone did ask for a Claret Sword one a while ago. I did make a deck and I was going to test it, but then uh, Max hates playing on tabletop simulator. Uh, you weren't around at the time. Uh, and I think I played against Dan briefly, but he was playing like some top ticket deck or some shit. I can't remember. There was some sort of excuse why I haven't played it. Uh, but yeah, either way, car is hard. It's it's okay. We did our, our, our full meta tier list not too long ago as well, which you weren't involved in, which it would have been good if you were to be fair. Yeah, I am kind of a meta game guy. Yeah, you do actually know the meta game. I think it was me and Lee who did that. Or it was yeah, me and I mean, Max. I, mean I, I saw it, it was mostly right. Anyway, yeah. I think that's going to be it for today's uh, today's podcast. Yep. Uh, we'll catch you around next week for more stuff. Set 10 reveals start now, so we actually get some Shadow Paladin stuff. Yeah, so look forward to that. Yeah. All right. We'll catch you guys around next time. Bye.